Okay, hello and welcome. I hope everyone's doing well. I'm doing pretty good. Uh, let's do some more Dwarf Fortress. Bow wow. It's still going. <laughs> hello, welcome, welcome, Lothar. How's it going? Uh, let's see. This one. Yes, Plane of Enchantress. 21 saves. I have been busy. Uh, <laughs> since last time. Sleepish. Yeah. I can understand that. It's still kind of been rather warm here, so... It's the kind of weather where it's like, Ugh, it's too hot to get up. I just want to lie in bed with the fan on me. <laughs> great, great way to start the year, but... <laughs> Then you're like, oh, I guess I've got to get up at some point. Or rather, it's just like, I don't want to get up. I'm going to wait until it gets cooler. <laughs> but it is actually your favorite cooler here now. Hello, welcome, welcome, GG. Started Serious Sam 2 yesterday. You're really enjoying it, especially the goofy story. I've heard good things about Serious Sam 2 now. Um, on release, people weren't really impressed with it because it was so cartoony, as you said compared to uh first and second encounter um and that kind of thing it can kind of override other aspects of the game whether it's uh, good or not um but yeah i've heard that it plays perfectly fine maybe aside from some of the bosses being a bit annoying um but yeah I haven't really played any of the Serious Sam games after the first and second encounter. Um, there was also that other one which they made recently, wasn't it? Planet Badass or something like that? That kind of was announced and then I never saw anything about it. Or was it something else? There was the one where it was on like a motorbike or something. Did they, or did it like change, change, uh, tracked at some point? Serious Sam 4 seems to be fairly well received. Anyway. Um, what was I saying? Oh yes, Dwarf Fortress. So, uh, you can see I have been kind of busy with this. Uh, I think we finished in year 108 last time uh and it's now year 112 so uh four years have passed and we now have 100 dwarves from the 40-ish i think we had last time um bumped it up from 50 to population cap of 100 uh and uh we've been quite busy so one of the first things I want to mention is, you remember last time, we ended on a problem, which I had been mentioning a few times, in that large numbers of bat people were spawning on the map, uh, invisible, and they were causing a lot of frame rate issues. The game would pause for, like, 30 seconds at a time, update for a single frame, and then take another 30 seconds to update for the next frame well uh i've inadvertently managed to uh fix that though it does come with a bit of a caveat so the bat people appear on the first uh cavern slayer and they're still out there i can't see them but i know they're there um but i haven't had frame rate issues and uh i believe that's because i've uh raised the bridges here so none of my dwarves are out in the caverns area here. They're all restricted to this area in here. Uh, there are some gaps here, but there's no ramps. They can't navigate out into the greater, uh, the, uh, the greater, uh, caverns area. And the bat people just sort of hang around the areas where they are, so they're not moving over here. And that seems to have fixed the, uh, frame rate issues. At least the game hasn't had any issues for the last four years in the game so that's uh yeah that's quite a good thing as i said though it doesn't mean there's a lot of resources around here that i can't make use of because i haven't been mining out of here 
I suppose there's some areas I could mine into, but no, that's, you know, that's good. Um, it, I raised these originally because my military was destroyed by that uh, demon creature. And, uh, well, my fortress was destroyed by that demon creature and uh, I had to train up a new military. So I raised the bridges uh, so that no, you know, trolls or anything would come in and finish off the rest of my dwarves. My military has had good training since then. And, uh, but I've just left the bridges up because, hey, if it solves the problem, I don't really want to lower them again. Uh, and have those frame rate issues again. I haven't tested to see whether that will occur. Now, I said I know that the bad people are out there, even though I can't see them. And, uh, this is because, even though I don't have access to this cavern slayer, uh, forgotten beasts still spawn in here every now and then. And, uh, you can see the corpse of one of them here. Uh, corpse. Note that. There's a few other corpses of Forgotten Beasts around here. They'll spawn in from the edge of the map, wander around for a bit, and then sort of go around some of the edge areas here. And they'll start fighting uh, in bat people, which I can't see. And I just watch as the Forgotten Beasts end up bleeding, heavily bleeding, pale, and then they die because they get stabbed to death by all the uh, bat people, which kind of makes me a bit scared. There has to be so many of them out here. <laughs> to be able to take down these uh, forgotten beasts, uh, and, and these ones weren't like, you know, made of blood or anything either. I think a lot of these were like, like giant worm creatures with poisonous vapors and other such things. So, uh, yeah, the bridges are staying up again because I'm a little scared. <laughs> Hello, welcome, welcome, Wex. Any new goblin negotiations? Oh, yes, that's something else which I have to go over. Um, I've been keeping some people uh, updated on a uh, Discord I'm on uh, with some of the shenanigans which has been occurring. So we'll get to the fort and how it's been updated uh, in a moment, but it's actually in response to this. So... I forget which year it was. Uh, it might have been year 110, 111. Uh, there was a uh, goblin siege. And uh, however, they appeared on the edge of the map. And I got an alert up here for diplomacy. And uh, the goblins were going, oh, hey, uh, we would like to parlay. And... Uh, I was like, hmm, what's this? I've never seen this before. Goblins wanting to parlay. Have I beaten them so much that they're wanting to ask for peace? So I opened up, you know, diplomacy with them. My mayor came out to actually talk to the uh, goblins themselves. Uh, he actually travelled across the map over to where the goblins were, which I think was over here. And uh, the goblins were like, oh, hey, uh, we're interested in this artifact which you have. It is rightfully ours. Uh, would you consider handing it over? And, uh, this was called the Wilted something or other? Uh, let me just have a look at the images which I posted. Uh, the Wilted Top, which I think we've had for quite a while. It wasn't created by any of my dwarves. It's not one of these artifacts here, which we made ourselves. It was actually in named objects. Uh, here it is, actually. It's still listed here. Uh, it was wielded by one of my dwarves, one of my axe dwarves, uh, an axe lord who died against the uh, Forgotten Beast. I'm guessing they came in off the map with it. Um, let's see, it's listed as Kib Bornroof's family heirloom, uh, which is the name of the dwarf who owned it. Um, but they asked for this axe, and uh, I was like, well, it's not one of the artifacts my fortress made, and I'm interested in seeing what this ends up doing. So I was like, sure. Uh, my mayor went off, picked up the axe. It was only worth like 60 dwarf bucks. And handed it over to the goblins. At this point, I had actually moved my military over to where the goblins were. Uh, just in case they uh, decided to attack my... Uh, attack my mayor in the process. Or after they got the artifact or something. Here, I'll actually bring up an image. Because I was taking some screenshots. Uh, rather than just yakking about this. Uh, where is it? 
as proof that this occurred, because... Here we go. Let me just uh, turn off the game capture so it's a bit easier to see. So there we go. You can see my mare there. This is him uh, just before he was delivering the axe to the goblins. Uh, you can see he's got a little artifact, a uh, little image over his head. And you can see some of my military uh, right next to the goblins there. And the uh, goblins themselves just sitting there in a bunch. Uh, and then when my mayor handed over the artifact to the goblins, they just left. Um, so yeah, that was interesting. Um, let me just bring that back up. There we go. So I was, I, was, I was thinking about this, like, oh, does that mean that I've organized peace with the goblins? You know, it's like, oh, if you, we, we just want this artifact. Uh, if you give it to us, you know, we'll, uh, we, we'll, we'll have peace between us now. Well, uh, you can see some splatches of blood and uh, some bits of arm and such, which I've actually missed around here. Uh... That was not the answer. Turns out that they just uh, wanted the artifact and were going to ask me for it instead of just attacking me. Um, we're still at war with the goblins. They've sent... Uh, they've, they've sent uh, snatchers still. Um, and they'd actually sent another group to come and attack me. Of the usual crossbows and bowmen. So, yeah. Just as proof. Here we are. They were from the Menace of Loot Goblin uh, faction. And we're still at war with them. Some may consider this to be a... Uh, to be a very traitorous to dwarf kind uh, action on my half. <laughs> I was getting berated for my choice elsewhere. <laughs> um, but you'll be happy to know that we're still at war with the, dwarf, with the uh, goblin scum. And uh, after that, I was actually like, hmm. I should probably prepare just in case, you know, we're not actually at peace with them. So we started constructing the uh, fortifications. They've actually been put up pretty quickly. Uh, we have this outer wall here, which has been made of claystone. It's only one level high at the moment. Uh, I'm wanting it probably to be at least two or three levels high. I'll have to cons I'll have to think about how I want uh, it to be on the second level here or the first level here. Uh, I'm probably going to do, like, alternating fortifications so dwarves can shoot out of the, uh, gaps in the fortress walls. Maybe only in these tower areas? I'm not too sure. Uh, you can see we've cut down all the sagueros here. Uh, a lot of that's gone into the flooring in here. Uh, I've also, uh, started, uh, moulding the front of the mountain here to s sort of better shape it so because i'm keen so that uh, we can't get attacked from down the mountain because i'm keenly aware that you know we could get attackers from over here or even over here uh where they've actually spawned in uh near the top of the mountain and they could just walk down the mountain because it's all slope and uh attack my get into my fortress from that way um th this is something which is kind of difficult to deal with in dwarf fortress because the mountain is covered in slopes, it's I, I find it quite difficult to just make an area completely impassable if it's butted up against a mountain. Uh, how I've done it here is I've gone up Z levels until I can channel downwards and I've just channeled straight down. Uh, so it's a sheer cliff face. Uh, like what I did here. Uh, but I haven't done that everywhere. You can see that, like, here, if they got in, they could get onto these top um, higher layers of the uh, entrance part here. Uh, but that's something to worry about later on, I guess. And my military can deal with the goblins now, again. Um, so, yeah, we've got a, a Gabbro wall going across the front here, which is two Z levels high. I want to get to be three Z levels high. Um, again... To match this uh, main wall going along here. Um, I probably have little towers on the corners here as well. As uh, maybe scattered every now and then along 
the main wall and then we'll have the big towers here which are alongside the iron uh the iron road uh these areas in here are going to be enclosed so the only way to get into these towers is from within the fort i have tunnels underground which lead from these areas here up into here i've got a gap here at the moment in these just so that my doors have an easier time accessing back and forth because i've been hauling stone and i want to cut down the uh, length of those trips they take because they get very thirsty in the process and uh in here uh, I've actually started working on the uh, main entrance for the uh, fortress. It's kind of a big uh, hall with large pillars, which I've decided are going to be made out of iron. So I've been uh, mining this out in here. It goes up five levels. Uh, it hasn't been channeled out, so each floor I'm mining out separately. And then I'm going to start channeling out each floor row by row uh, after I've replaced these pillars here with uh, iron. And then I'll do the same for the next floor, then the same for the next floor. Oh, no, no, no. Also, I missed out something else. Uh, each floor, as well as changing these uh, pillars to iron, I'm going to smooth out the edges and then I'll... Uh, channel away the floor and then move down to the next one and then do the same and then the next one and then the next one and the next one <laughs> that's going to take a while um i'll probably also start work on some like bedrooms areas over here um maybe changing this quarry i made here into kind of a well it's already kind of a big room so i could just extend it out this way and build some houses uh into the walls here and uh i was thinking maybe i could have like little underground plants growing in uh in some uh squares because you can actually get dwarves to collect water from a source and dump it on a tile and uh when that happens the water becomes muddy uh the idea i got is from these squares here uh you can see a tower cap is growing here because there's some aquifer behind these walls here uh and it leaked onto this tile and made it muddy and then a tower cap grew so it might take a while but i could have like little fungus trees growing outside of people's houses which i don't know that would look nice since i can't actually plant trees myself uh let's see when i was talking developers of the original game was killed in action in ukraine yeah i saw that very sad uh um let's see yeah it's been a slow process mining this all out uh i've got the front doors kind of how i i imagined them uh constructed here these iron uh blocks here it's a door with quotation marks um it's more just sort of visually supposed to evoke a door rather than being an actual door uh i'll put like the trade depot out here when we start moving into this area um but we've got these pillars these iron uh pillars here or iron walls which go up five levels and then it hits the roof um the way i've done it does mean that dwarves can go through the diagonal of this door here which eh, you know they shouldn't be phasing through an area like that but well it's not that big of a deal <laughs> um i guess maybe i could come up with a design which involves bridges instead which might look a bit nicer like I have bridges which go up, but bridges only go up uh, one Z level. They go down like eight, ten levels, like horizontally, but then when you raise them, they're only a single Z level. And I want to keep in mind uh, verticality for a lot of this, uh, because in the past when I've made dwarf fortresses of grand scales, uh, I end up looking at them and I'm like, this looks really nice, but it's only a single Z level. So you imagine it, 
it's just really flat um and you don't get like you know pillars disappearing up into the uh ceiling that's a good reason i usually don't bother with that it takes an awfully long time in dwarf fortress to do vertical constructions because it's basically the amount of work you need to do for one level and then multiplied uh more than twice because you got to be like with all the channeling here you got to do it like row by row and redo it each time or you have to be very careful about doing it because the dwarves if you just like designate the entire area to be channeled dwarves will channel it out and leave sections of roof which is just floating in midair and then it will collapse and it can possibly squish dwarves and ugh. so mining it row by row make sure that it's still connected to the walls and you're not going to get cave-ins but it takes a long time <laughs> anyway good thing is though since i'm going to be mining away all the channeling away all the floor i won't have to smooth it i just have to smooth the walls so that will uh, shorten the amount of time i could also maybe have walkways up here going from one side to the other around the edges hmm think about it <clears throat> anyway yak 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 uh yeah what else uh the fortress is about the same as it's always been there's more bedrooms because we have twice as many dwarves now uh i think i showed the uh extended uh mausoleum area now i've actually made a uh little gold uh little golden tomb here with a gold sarcophagus and gold doors with gold floor and walls uh this is specifically for um uvad nisham the axe lord who uh is the dwarf who managed to save the fortress by killing tomb night uh tombs nightmares the spidery the real nation of the fated in 108 this is the uh demonic being which we unleashed who killed 25 dwarves before uh, uh, before uh, she was able to kill it so we've uh, honored her with a very nice tomb uh, as well as a statue here with some gold floor around it uh, we're probably going to have to make some more statues to line the uh, front of the fortress and so on to remember other dwarves who died in the attack but yeah oh also this is where our uh, previous uh duke is buried bemble uh rather amusingly i think he was he was uh entombed in a uh casket over here even though i designated this one as being his as being his opulent uh tomb they shoved him into one of these small rooms so i had to actually uh remove his body from there and put it in here because <laughs> i he, he was very specific about having this fancy room so he's got to he's got to be resting in there damn it uh i've got some soap production going i have an ashery there and uh i have a soap makers up here as well i was going to put some other things up here i think those were going to be looms just a moment uh, because we've been actually making a fair amount of clothing for people eh. uh, we have a lot of uh, alpacas and llamas so i've been uh, shearing them for their wool and we can use the uh, yarn from them in the production of clothing lovely enough though i think our current uh mayor udib he's got a likeness he's got a fondness for bucklers uh and also i believe backpacks which is really annoying <laughs> bucklers are fine i have heaps and heaps of iron but uh backpacks are more annoying because they require specifically leather to make i think and uh i don't have a lot of leather i have to i don't know why we have capable of leather probably traded for it but um I have to like kill one of my alpacas or llamas every single time. We have a lot of them though. 
I think we could milk them also. Uh, but I don't think we'd be doing that. I've just been buying milk. I don't know if dwarves will drink milk. I think it's only used in cooking. Anyway. I've also been spending an awful lot of time going around the fortress and designating all of the all of the like damaged and wear worn out clothing which dwarves just drop wherever they're standing <laughs> to go into the dump pile over here which is a huge pain <laughs> there's so many clothing articles which they just leave strewn all over the fortress because they'll be walking along and then they'll be like oh my shoes fallen off my shoes like broken or like nearly destroyed so they'll just drop it on the ground and move on and then I have to go and say, dump this. They'll go and dump it. I wish there was a better way to deal with it. I want to trade them all, but... I don't want the clothes in my fortress. Because if I unforbid them from this pile, my dwarves will all run out to here, pick up these objects, and put them into my uh, stockpile here I have for clothes. And I don't want them in here. Look, they've already got a huge amount of uh, damaged clothing in there. Uh, um, the X has been that it's damaged. It's like designating the quality of it. I think it just means it's worn. Uh, but and like two X's means nearly destroyed. But they can pick up multiple objects at once when they're transferring them. But it's very laborious having to go through these lists and click on the icons. If I wanted to trade them, as I said, I'd have to unforbid them, which means all the dwarves would run out and put them in here. Because I can't say don't put worn out items in a stockpile. I don't. You don't have that quality level. There's only it goes only goes down to standard, as far as I know. So if I could designate a stockpile out here to be for like worn out clothes, that would be great. Because then I could go, oh, one out clothes. It's also, if I want to trade them, I have to go through the list of all the items which I have in my fortress, going through, saying yes to each individual piece of clothing which is damaged, or, you know, activate, selecting each individual damaged piece of clothing to trade, and, oh, it's a pain. I can't search using an X to list only damaged clothing. It doesn't consider the uh the quality um symbols in the name of an object as uh qualifies for the search engine so um <laughs> and it, it, it get me started and i won't stop so much fetching anyway you like that they'll wander down a hallway, realize their pants are worn out, discard them, then feel embarrassed for not being coming. Yeah, <laughs> they make their own problems. <laughs> I wouldn't be so so worried about it if it was like, you know, oh, my clothes are damaged. I'm going to go home and shove it into my cabinet because that's why they have them there. They actually do put their clothes in the cabinets, but just as often as leaving them in their room, like this shoe on the bed here, they'll just dump them wherever. And it's just like, They just leave clothes strewn all over the place. Ugh. So I have to go clean up after them. There's going to be parts which I miss. It's not so bad for iron items, because if they get damaged to worn out, you can designate them to be melted. And then you'll get some bars out of it, you can reforge the bars into new armor, and it goes that way. Clothing, you can't deconstruct them to get thread out of them again. So your really options are either to dump them and atom smash them which i don't really want to do because i have corpses of forgotten beasts in here I, I want to put on pedestals or to trade them which is a huge pain as i said before <laughs> to go through the entire list and it's also because you can see here this glove it's covering up a barrel there with seeds in it um so i can't tell what's underneath them that was a thing in the base game as well in the ascii art um it's just <laughs> anyway moving on um i've just been making coffers and doors and tables to 
fill in people's bedrooms. Um, but yeah, we'll just... I don't have any cabinets, apparently. Okay. Uh, we'll just keep... Placing some chests down in people's rooms. Because I like putting a cabinet and chest in each person's bedroom. Just makes it look a little nicer. They don't need them. I'm pretty sure the dwarves only need a bed. They don't need anything else. Anything else is just extra window dressing. But, hey. Let's try and make the, uh... <laughs> Let's try and make their homes not quite so just squalid. If they have nicer bedrooms, they get thought they get positive thoughts out of them as well, so. I don't think it takes much for them to be happy about the quality of their bedroom though. They'll be like, oh I slept in a fantastic bedroom. And as you create beds, your uh craft uh, your uh carpenter dwarf will get better. So they'll be they'll get happy thoughts from sleeping on a high quality masterwork made bed anyway. There's some more room over here for other bedrooms, which I was making. Um, but then, uh, all the fortifications were taking a lot of time, so the other projects sort of fell to the wayside. Uh, these areas here, uh, these are some guilds which have been requested to be founded in the fortress. Uh, I think this happens when you get a certain number of dwarves all of the same profession. Well, with like a certain level of skill in the profession. Uh, I think this one's a farmer's... Yeah, this is a farmer's guild hall. Uh, this one is a craft dwarf guild hall. And this one is a planter guild hall. So I've uh, made them rather nice with uh, some gold statues, smoothed floors and some engravings and bits of golden floor in there. Um, to raise the uh, value of them up. Uh, this one's a little off because uh, part of the wall has uh, has uh, some uh, what's it called? Aquifer there. So uh, it had to be a bit squished. I didn't want to mine this away to see how thick the aquifer was. If it was only going to be a dribble or if it was going to be a torrent of water flooding out. <laughs> I decided not to take that risk because this is lower in my fortress. So... It'd probably be only a trickle. That's what was down here in the, uh... In the, uh... What's it called? In the, uh, quarry. But, you know, as I said, this is where my dwarves' bedrooms are. I didn't want to risk it. Because I don't have water flooding down the spiral staircase. That would be very nice waterfall, but... Oh, hey. Vutok. Cador Lavos bookkeeper has bestowed the name Idathenk Doth Nikik Olon upon a steel shield. I've been training for some items here and there to fill out people's uh, equipment in the military. They still don't have like all of their clothing and I don't know why. They have enough of these items. Let me see. Fath, where are you? Okay, you're here, Fat. So what are you wearing? You got gauntlets, iron breastplate, iron chain leggings, steel mail shirt, iron helm. Oh. Okay. So, do you have greaves? No, you don't have greaves. It might just be because they're wearing some steel items instead of iron, because I think their uh, uniform specifies iron? Or better? So it, it might just be saying that, oh, well, they... They, uh, you know, they could wear iron, but they've got better. You've got a bronze helmet. Steel shield, iron mail shirt, gauntlets. Iron breastplate. You don't have leggings. Hmm. 
Hmm. I'm pretty sure all your armor is over here. Iron high boots. Oh, we got a lot of large items, so I don't need those. All the shields we've got from those uh, bat people. Um, I guess I could melt down all the shields. Are these stupid bucklers. <laughs> and this abyssmus bronze chain leggings. Uh. There's some, there's some greaves. There's some chain leggings. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they don't always go around to get all of their equipment before they go into uh, practice. Oh, there's a whole bunch of damaged cloth, um, leather and armor in there. Let's dump all that. Nobody's going to wear that. Uh. Okay. Why is that? Oh, because it's damaged. Uh. Yeah, I mean, I've got like chain leggings and greaves for them to wear. We've got weapons in here. All the crossbows I've been making for the, uh... I, I was making for the previous, uh... Mayor, or Duke. And then crossbows we've gotten from the goblins, all the spears we took from the bad people. I'm surprised they can fit that many weapons in a single crate, jeez. A bunch of iron picks and battle axes in there. Um, I was wanting to make steel, but I need flux stone, and I don't think I have any in my fortress. Flux stone is like marble or... Uh, I would have to look at look up the uh, different things. Let me see. <coughs> flux. Calcite, chalk, dolomite, limestone, and marble. Okay, so chalk, dolomite, limestone, or marble. Because calcite is found within other flux layers. Let's see. Limestone, dolomite, and chalk form sedimentary layers. That means they're close to the surface. Marble is a metamorphic layer, so it can be found within almost any biome. Notably, marble can be found in the same biome as igneous extrusive layers, i.e. near volcanoes, unlike sedimentary layers. Note that borax, a real life flux, cannot be used in the game. Okay, so I guess limestone or marble would be our best bet, but I don't think I've come across any. We've got Gabbro. 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 It'd be funny if you had to, like, let your world go on for so many years before you could stack any flux stone. There's a forgotten beast. Eban Myth. Missen Gothel. Sucked Knight the Grizzly, go grizzly Ghost. Uh, what's this one? A towering one eyed pterosaur. It has two short horns and it undulates rhythmically. Its rose scales are large and close set. Beware its deadly spittle. Looks like it's been quite busy killing a whole bunch of troglodytes up here. Uh, there's a dead one over there. Kut Habe Vaf 
Vaffy's Ithy. Um, so yeah, Forgotten Beasts have been appearing on the other uh, cavern layers as well, but because I don't have any, uh, because I don't have any uh, path out into the caverns, they've just been wandering around out there and killing things, so I've been able to just ignore them, which I'm uh, happy to do for the moment. Uh, let's see. Gabbro. Gabbro. I wish there was a search function somewhere where you could go like, okay, go into list of materials found and then you could just search for like marble and if you have any marble found on any Z level it will take you to it um, because you do get notifications over here when you find a specific uh, item like this like native gold and it will actually take me to where it appeared but you can't do that once the message just disappeared yeah 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 exporter bucklers I like bucklers. Okay, let's see. Gabbro, cobalt height. This native gold. This mountain is so rich in gold. I mean, it's just Gabbro. It's just Gabbro and nothing else. Well, obsidian, but... Yeah. Ah, <sighs> okay. Like, we are astride two separate biomes here. Uh, we've got the mountain biome, obviously, over here. And we've got a uh, desert biome over here. So, you know, being in two separate biomes like that does mean you can get uh, different types of resources. But uh, I haven't come across anything over there. Make an obscene amount of bucklers, but don't you dare sell any. It's really annoying. Like when I had like the previous duke who was asking me to make amulets and it's like oh okay but i can't trade the amulets even though that's really all that they're good for i guess the bucklers are a bit more useful but i prefer shields over bucklers just because they're larger they do a better job of protecting my dwarves Uh, well, there's gypsum. That's good to know, actually. Microcline, mudstone. Yeah, okay. We'll go over there and get some of that gypsum because... Um... I do need some of that for uh, powder. For uh, plaster. In case anyone gets injured. However, you can make do without pl um, plaster powder. Um, as I read, you can use wooden splints just fine. Um, it just provides another option. I don't know if one of them's better or not. I think it comes down to the skill level of the uh, of the dwarf. Okay, that's off. Uh, doing the uh, bone setting or whatever. It's just these piles of blood and, uh, well, this is actually from a Forgotten Beast. It's killing a whole bunch of the, uh, Jolther and all that. There's some bat people over there too. <laughs> and these, uh, elk birds, which haven't been wandering through my fortress because they can't, they can't get into my fortress. So there's probably quite a lot of them out there now. Again, I don't want to think how many bat people are out here. Alabaster, gypsum, mudstone, microcline. Hmm. Uh, 
Hang on, let me see. No, gypsum's not one. <laughs> the, the only other option would be to ask if they could, if traders could bring some. But I don't think they'd bring that much. We've also been getting a lot of, like, I'm, I'm not sure what's causing this, but we've been getting a lot of pools of, like, forgotten beast extract left all over the place. And I'm assuming it's just from dwarves cleaning themselves. I've been making soap, so they've probably been going to the uh, wells and uh, cleaning themselves off from that. Um, but then there was a time when it started snowing out here, and all this blood appeared everywhere around here. I guess it fell off of all of my reindeer and all that. Like, they've got blood on them. Apparently they've got goblin blood on them. I don't know why. I guess they've just been walking through the blood. So if it starts snowing, it'll just go... And they get washed, and all the blood covers the ground. Made me rather worried, but... Uh, they didn't seem to cause any problem. Yeah, like, there's more of that forgotten beast extract around there. And I, I don't know why. I don't think I've got the mods, like, tracking it around. I believe I turned that off. Yeah, walking spread spatter. No. So. I don't know. I don't think it's doing anything. Why? Well, hey. Is it doing something? Why do you have it over your... Is it because you're like eating the grass it's on? Like, the forgotten beast extract isn't... hurting them, I don't think. It's... Like, it says injured, but... No, apparently they are all injured. Diagnosis required. I, I have a, uh... Animal carer. Who is it? Yeah, do just that for the moment. Uh, unget. I want you to diagnose the animals. Something is weird. I might have to, like, put them somewhere else. Until the rain washes the extract away? I... I don't know. Like, that's a forgotten beast. I'm pretty sure it's one of the first ones which we killed. Again, I don't think its extract really did anything of notice... of note. The, the animals aren't dropping dead, so I'm not overly concerned. Maybe it's just causing, like, blisters on their feet. But then I would have noticed the blisters on the dwarves when they attacked it, and I didn't notice anything like that. Hmm. Yeah, you're healthy. Okay, so who's the dwarf? Uh, on get. Oh, you're attending a meeting.
I think I need to put some uh, chests in these rooms here for the temples so they have some uh, instruments <sighs> no, not you are you injured? You have a lower lip muscle wound. Lower lip muscle, upper lip muscle is injured. But I would expect something to be listed here. If you had a problem, evaluated, doctor, two years ago, fine. Yeah, you got a broken arm. Uh, from the goblin attack. I think you actually took quite a few arrows. Uh, but... Yeah, again, you seem to be fine. Ranger without a job. Do I need a specific room for like taking care of animals? Hold on. I got a pen pasture here. Animal training? Hang on. Animal caretaking should be the skill used by dwarves to treat any injured pets assigned to them, as long as they have the skill labored, enabled, as well as feeding any hungry, thirsty animals on chains. Currently, however, the first part does nothing for animals, but dwarves can gain experience in it during world gen, leading to animal caretakers appearing in migrant waves. The second part, feeding chained grazers, grants no experience, but can satisfy stay occupied and help somebody needs. Note that dwarves will not feed animals in loose cages, stockpiled cages, but will feed animals in built cages. If the food has seeds, the seeds will remain in the cage. They can only be removed by dumping. Wounded animals will instead heal on their own or not at all, which makes even your greatest animal caretakers equivalent to peasants. Animal caretaking is not planned to be implemented in the near future, and as such, animal caretakers who arrive in migrant waves should be immediately repurposed into other actually functional professions. Okay, so there we go. I actually thought there was a way to care look after animals. I guess I'm just thinking about training them to be war animals. Okay, never mind. Uh, we will remove this uh, animal caretaker uh, job, which... What do I have? Training, care, trapping, small animal dissection. Uh, just put animal training. I guess you could do that. Uh, but I'll put that on any. Everyone does this. There we go. 
Oh, I didn't. Uh, yeah, my miners are just focusing on uh, doing mining because there's been a lot of it to do. So, okay. I guess I can't really train wall llamas. <laughs> I think there's a specific building for training animals. Um, farmers? Vermicatcher shop. No, that's for catching the little critters which pop up every now and then. And uh, you can actually... I think dwarves can take them as pets. Um, you have like little cages and they can have like a snail in the cage or something. I, I think. Again, it's not something I've really messed with before. Pretty sure there used to be a farming. I mean, Still butcher tanner, fishery kitchen, farmer, quern, vermin catchers, nest box, hive. Oh, would it be under that? No. Hmm. Machines? No, no, no. Cages. No. Animal traps can be placed in the wild and baited with meat, plants, or gems in order to catch small creatures. Hmm. Maybe I'm thinking of an older version. I'm pretty sure there was like a... Animal trading building. Oh well. Uh, animal trainer. Let's have a look. Animal training zone or pasture. Let me have a look. Uh, yes. Okay. So this is what I'm thinking of. In version 0.31 point 25 listed on the wiki animal trainer is a skill associated with the animal training labor an animal trainer works at a kennel taming certain animals with food and turning some tame animals into war or hunting animals so i'm just a little bit out of date with my knowledge there <laughs> uh yeah that's what i'm thinking of that you had a kennel which you trained creatures at but it seems like when zones were introduced uh, it was swapped over to, uh, being just a, uh, zone. Okay, then. That's fine. It shows you that how often I've done stuff with it. Stuff with it. I.e. never. Okay, uh, we have a caravan. Oh, and a jeweler has... Uh, withdrawn from society. Let's see. Rough gems. Okay. Yeah, this is always a little bit of a problem. Because I have... Uh, I have my... Uh, miners on... No, I have my gem cutters on... Uh, cut all rough gems into uh in uh you know yeah cut all rough gems so when the people who are making artifacts ask for rough gems uh, i don't have any so i have to go mine some more gems out I'm going to be removing these pillars in their entirety anyway, so... Mining them out like this. Ooh, hey, there's a gem. Have you moved off to get that? You have. Good. Okay. They're actually pretty good. If you mine out one gem, uh, it will be taken by the... If if, if you get one of a resource, uh, by so uh, which is required by someone who's making an artifact, I'm pretty sure they're, they're pretty good at, like, immediately laying claim to it. 
look at the trade is. Okay, move goods. Mm. I guess move those. Move that. Uh, I don't actually have any uh, shell crafts anymore. We've sold them all. Over the years. And I believe the uh, pond is finally... <laughs> Empty of turtles. <laughs> there was a lot of them in there. They fueled us for like 10 years. Um. That's, that's fine. Okay, so I want bins and I want my, uh. Gem bins. There we go. And that one, I guess. Uh. There we go. And you. Can I just put my gem in here? Uh... Apparently I can, but it doesn't seem to do anything. <laughs> it's weird. Whatever. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, something else which happened. Um, so if you remember, uh, we had the case of one of my dwarves, Arab Yawn Gear here, uh, who I think is dead now. Maybe? Let's see. Yeah, they're dead now. Uh, but we had the case of the uh, of Arab uh, colluding with a uh, outside in of the fortress intelligent uh, undead to steal some of our artifacts. Uh, Quill sunk the prime visionary and uh, last brains here, which was a uh, bug. Uh, and I was mentioning how I knew who the uh, ringleader of this was. But I didn't, uh, I wasn't able to convict them. So they actually visited again. It's this one here, Getak Virgin Blossoms. Uh, I forget, again, I think they're a type of, uh, intelligent undead they have blue skin uh and they've visited a few times over the many years uh but last time they uh, arrived i uh convicted them as a uh, uh where is it can i say they don't actually show up in here i guess because i've left um, but I convicted them of the crime, and my, uh, sheriff actually ran off to try and apprehend them, but as soon as they arrived into my fortress, they went to my, uh, they went to my temple, sat there for, you know, as soon as they got to my temple, they, uh, moved to leave. I don't know whether that's because I had convicted them of the crime, uh, but my sheriff was busy with other things, hauling stone to create the wall. Uh, so they never actually got over to uh, arrest Getak before they managed to uh, run off the map again. So apparently there's actually a uh, boss of this whole organization 
and uh, Getak is just a lower level member of that. That's something which has nearly popped up. So yeah, associated organization, unidentified. Infiltrate the Furious Cloister, agreed in 101. Steel Cool Sunk, the Prime Visionary, agreed in 104. Arab became a part of that. And then Steel Last Brains agreed in 106. There's apparently some other things around here, but I don't know what those are. I've been interrogating a lot of people for other crimes. Um, so we have no open cases. A lot of this is just disorderly conduct. People throwing temper tantrums and upending like a still or the kitchen or breaking something else and punching another dwarf. So it's like, yeah. You get to spend some time in the jail. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, but yeah, we we're so close to being able to convict that uh, person about the uh, crime, but about the theft, but no, they got away. Uh, what was I doing before I was saying that? I was moving stuff over to here for trading. Mm. Okay, you're just mining in there. That's fine. You can mine out that for some more gems. Okay. This wall, this is actually useful for it because I've been making the wall out of claystone. I wanted to use slate as well, but uh, where is it? I have some slate around here, which I was digging up and I thought, oh yeah, I could use this because it's a similar color. Nope makes it look different so i have to use claystone because it all looks the same color slate is slightly reddish compared to the uh, brown of the claystone i guess i could have made it all out of gabbro but uh i had a lot of claystone so i thought we could have the outer wall brown and the uh, inner walls gray a bit mismatching but the other option would be making everything out of iron but uh, that would require a lot more mining of iron a lot of uh, forging. The world is the same as ever. Okay, now, you. I need... I don't think I can ask you for stone. I think if it's in... Oh, no, I can. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Right, I want limestone. And I want chalk. What are the other flux stones? Let me just bring this over here. Okay. Uh... Chalk, limestone, calcite. Now, this isn't in alphabetic order. Marble. Dolomite. and calcite so let's see calcite chalk dolomite limestone and then marble okay that's all the flux stones <clears throat> that's what i would like please thank you you need cheese okay I can do that. Um, I actually have a lot of milk. Make cheese. Um, make infinite cheese, I guess. We have milk, and I don't think it's used, doesn't seem to be used for anything else. So we'll make alpaca cheese.
Uh, cheese is a food item made from milk at a farmer's workshop with the cheese making label. It can be eaten as is or cooked into prepared meals. Let's see, what's milk used for? Milk is a product extracted from milkable creatures. Yes. <laughs> it cannot be consumed as is. Okay. There's actually a variety of different milkable creatures. Alpacas, camels, cows, donkeys, goats, horses, kangaroos. Can't say I've ever heard of kangaroo cheese. I don't imagine you'd get much milk from a kangaroo. Llama, pig, purring maggot, reindeer, sheep, tapir, water buffalo, and yak. Purring maggots are, uh, they used to be found all over the place. Uh, they're a type of cavern vermin. I think they're pretty much like one of the only vermins in the earlier game versions. Um, and dwarves pretty much just disliked them. Uh, but yeah, you, you can milk the purring maggots for uh, milk, known as dwarven milk. Uh, but I believe the uh, process of milking purring maggots just involves them getting squished. Or something like that, uh, because I'm pretty sure it kills them in the process. Uh, eh. Anyway, sorry. No, oh, apparently they can't be milked for if tamed. So, you can't get it from purring maggots anyway. <laughs> Let's just get it from animals, like cows. That's, uh, that, 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 that's a bit nicer. Yeah, get rid of these shoes. Blah. <laughs> Don't want to see it. Okay. Don't want that. Don't want that. Don't want that. Uh, I'll get them. Bags. Leather. Yes, I want that. All of your leather, please. And pigtail cloth. And, uh, water buffalo leather. Jabbera leather, I guess. That's a type of cavern creature. Cave blob. Wow, do you have a lot of leather? I think it's because I asked for leather, but I listed every single creature. Just to make sure they arrived with it. So we'll we'll take a few more. Turkey leather. Pond grabber. Yeah, that's fine. It's like, here's all the leather you asked. Oh thanks, I'll just take like a tenth of it. Gee, thanks. <laughs> that's basically all they've got. Just leather. They have a backpack. Yeah, I'll take that. And some cheese. And a crutch. And a parchment, I guess. No, I don't want to sell the glass. Okay. There we go. No. It also means I need to train up my, uh, Trader's skill at appraisal. Hopefully they've been uh, doing a bit better with all the practice they've been getting. I try to at least purchase something from each of the caverns, which caravans which come by. Because it does just... It all counts as experience. 
Uh, even if I don't really purchase anything of particular use. I think I also asked for some glass to be made. But that was a while ago, and I might have stopped them from doing that. Okay, sell the trousers. Right, now we'll sell some things which are worth about 400. There we go. Thank you. And bins. Uh, we'll just move these gem bins back. And I wish they listed all of the things which were being traded up the top of here. Or you could, like, just say, have a, have a category which is just traded, you know, items being traded. And so you can easily move them all back. You see my, uh, dwarf over here taking the, uh, llama to be sheared. Everyone's going to be wearing wool clothes. Can't say I would be a fan. I find wool clothes to be... often far too itchy. Though they also have a lot of silk. Well, we're running a little low on that though because people haven't been able to go out into the caverns to collect more. Okay, good, you've started your mysterious construction uh let's go down here have you started mining this out you have cool okay we're gonna have to wait a year for any of the flux stone which i asked for i have to make a like write a note to myself which i am definitely going to read Flux from dwarves. Yep. Yeah. That won't get forgotten about. Let's see. Ilral, Ilral Doren Sazir, gem cutter, has created Sulfas Zorn, Odat Okab. A green, green tourmaline ring. The officer to the Furious Cloister. Let's have a look. Uh, we've had a few more artifacts too. Uh, I don't remember where we ended up, l ended last time. Was it here? With Soot Decal Bleed Skirts? We have a uh, Imesh Savot Sprinkled Stances. A, uh, another ring it looks like. Kuda das Tot, the Immortal Sword, which is a bucket. <laughs> and uh, here we go. Sylvasson Otad Okab. Lost to Helms, the hand of, hands are breaking. This is a green tourmaline ring. Warcraft Warship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with table cut green tourmalines and encircled with bands of trillion cut rock crystals and saguaro rib wood. On the item is an image of a cranberry vine in green tourmaline. That's quite nice. Uh, let's see. This is a gold uh, grate. Yeah, a native gold grate. Which is over here. <laughs> kind of looks like a large... Uh, like a large cracker or something. Uh, let's see. Bleed skirts. Llama bone crossbow. 
It's got gems on it. It's got some pictures on it too. Uh, the, on the image, on the item is an image of dwarves in lava leather. The dwarves are traveling. The artwork relates to the foundation of tower riddled by the furious cloister of the me mechanical chambers in the early spring of 100. On the item is an image of Kadol bulwark, ar bulwark armors. The dwarf had Ongox Valley tulips and wooden pelts of rock in alpaca leather. Ongox Valley tulips and wood pe wooden pelts is striking down Kadol bulwark armors. The artwork relates to the killing of the dwarf Kadol by the rock Ongox Valley tulips and the wooden pelts in the mountain of prairies in 98. And the item is an image of two briolet cut gems in tetrahedrite. Uh, what was MS Safot? A smoky quartz ring, worth around a four seven thousand. It encrusted with rectangular diorite cabochons, decorated with saguaro rib wood, and encircled with bands of point cut smoky quartz and alpaca wood. Wool. This object menaces with spikes of alpaca bone. On the item is an image of a ramy plant in smoky quartz. On the item is an image of a forgotten beast in cobalt height. On the item is an image of Atu Demon Gorgeous the Goblin and Bembel Banamutes the Dwarf in gla green glass. Atu Demon Gorgeous is making a plaintive gesture. Bembel Banamutes is striking a menacing pose. The artwork relates to the mortal wounding of the Goblin Atu Demon Gorgeous by the Dwarf Bembel Banamutes. That was our uh, Duke with an iron battle axe and tower riddled in the early autumn of 108 during Odd Natosp, the scraped sieges. Oh, interesting. So each siege the goblins have laid against us has got an actual name. On the item is an image of the Glad Stop, the giant cave toed bone figurine of Arab Yawned Gear in Ruthra leather. Oh, that's the, that's the dwarf who uh, was stealing the artifacts. She actually made an artifact of her own. Uh, where is it? I hope I don't have the wrong Bemble in there. Bemble, we, we had two. Zulban rule. Let me have a look. Lucky, luckily, uh, dwarven language is consistent across different games, so you can uh, look up a uh, <coughs> dictionary of nouns. Uh, let's see, Zulban. Banner. Okay, so I think that's the right one. Rule. Huh. What was it? Yeah, I think that's the right person. Zulban. The other one might be a noun. Anyway. Okay. So I'm, pr I'm, I'm pretty sure that is actually the right dwarf. Because it's like Bimble, Banner, whatever. And that was the right dwarf's name. Uh, so what was the artifact which the other dwarf made? Uh, this one, wasn't it? Yeah, Banner Mutes. The Glad Stop. The giant toad thing. The Glad Stop, here we are. Amkin Tossed. Giant cave toad. Giant cave toad bone figurine. This is worth 31,000. Of Arab yawned gear, 
all craft dwarf ship of the highest quality. The item is masterfully designed image of Arab Yordgear the Dwarf and a pond turtle shell crown in giant cave toad bone by Ushat Kog Muzia. M Muzish. Arab Yordgear is raising the pond, to pond turtle shell crown. The artwork relates to the masterful pond turtle shell crown created by the dwarf Arab Yordgear from for the Furious Cloister at Tower Riddled in the late autumn of 102. It is encircled with bands of water buffalo leather and cushioned claystone cabochons. This object is adorned with hanging rings of giant cave toad bone, iron, yellow diamond and claystone, and menaces with spikes of reindeer leather. On the item is an image of nightmares in fungi wood. What? What? What's Ushat got got to do with all this? Because it's saying it's a statue of her holding a crown above her head, and it's saying that relates to the creation of this masterwork crown by her. But then here it says the pod turtle shell crown in giant cave toad bone by Ushat Kogmuzish. As if it was made by another dwarf. Hmm. Hmm. Oh well. Please pull the lever. We have some other artifacts to put onto the pile. Udib. How's it going, Mayor? He was bored after being unable to practice a uh, craft for too long. I think I asked dwarves to make some uh, gold rings as well. So we'll uh, we'll make some more gold rings. So dwarves can get something nice. Let's see. Okay. But, uh, follow whether you end up uh putting this into the pile over there hang on actually will you accept a ring into this uh finish good rings yes you will okay you just have to wait for someone to come and pick it up I might have a few other artifacts lying around up here. Oh. Keep keep making that. Why do you have all these blocks? Do I have a thing here saying to make wood stone blocks? No. Hmm. I might have made them a long time ago and then uh forgot to uh Okay, good. Someone's actually come to uh, pick up the artifact. And uh, then not use the blocks for anything. I think it was because I was looking to see whether the uh, the blocks appear differently than just rough uh, blocks. Rough stone blocks when you're placing floors. And I don't believe they do. Which is nice. It cuts down on the amount of work Dwarves would have to do by a fair bit. Okay. Good. You've put the artifact into there. Now you're playing make believe. Uh.
Uh, let me just check some of the other artifacts which we have. So this bucket, where's that? Oh, it's in there. Oh, I guess you're using it. I'd prefer it not to be used, but, um, oh well. No, because I don't want it there, because it could be stolen. This one's in there. The crossbow's in there. That's in there. That's in there. Yeah. So, um... I don't think you can, like... I would have to say no buckets in here. Okay, please carry Kuda Dastot and uh, put it into the stockpile down here. Uh, that would go under here? Would it? Hang on. What buckets go under? There we go. Furniture. Are you going to carry the, uh, carry the bucket? This is a gold bucket. All craft warship is of the highest quality. It is studded with gold and encircled with bands of alpaca leather. The head was made from yellow diamond. How? Dwarves have got like a diamond extruder in their uh, workshops. This object menaces with spikes of gabbro, pink tourmaline and citrine. On the item is an image of a, of a... Quinoa in pigtail. On the item is an image of Block Fortunes, the adventure of mothers. The native gold grate in yellow jasper. Well, how appropriate that on a gold bucket they have an image of another solid gold object. Very nice. <laughs> and ostentatious. <laughs> ah, whatever. You're like resting in the hospital and they're like, okay, we're going to We'll just get you a drink, and you hear them, like, going, <laughs> They have to try and pick up this solid gold bucket full of water. <laughs> they have to, like, rest it on you, which breaks a rib or so, or two. As you're trying to drink from this bucket. <laughs> Okay, good. Then mind all this out. Let's uh, let's uh, mine out these pillars. There we go. <clears throat> oh, and I will start smoothing out these. If I miss any spots, I can just, like, build stairs to get up there. Oh, no, no. Okay, I want this out of Gabbro. Thank you. And this bit here can be Gabbro. There we go. I'll leave these little tunnels in there. Walls have to get out. And yeah, we're going to start making these eye walls. I was originally going to just have these be uh, smooth stone pillars, but uh, looking at the different layers, uh, they change stone type frequently. So I thought it would be nicer if they were uniform. And then I was like, if I go to replace them with an object with a uh, different material, uh, if they were made out of like gabbro. They'd have this cobblestone look to them, which wouldn't look too nice, so I decided on the iron, because it looks nice and smooth. Um, and I think we've got a huge amount of iron, so... Shouldn't really matter. Uh, yeah, 151 iron bars. It's 
not really a problem. Let me just... There we go. One, two, three. There we go. So this is going to take even more iron for each uh, level, but once we've got all this, I can, we can see about, uh, like, putting some interesting patterns on the floor or something. Inlay some designs on the floor in gold. There we go. I think that used up... Well, let's see. Each of these is using up nine. There's, uh... Twelve pillars, I think. Yeah, 12 pillars, mathematics, uh, 9, 99, uh, 108. Times 5 <laughs> for each floor. I don't know whether I'm going to, like, replace the walls. Because I'd like that all to be the same colour too. But, if I do that, again, if I replace it, it's going to look like this cobblestone. That's not going to look as nice, so I think I'll just smooth it out. Bar the few places where I actually had holes mined out. Um... Just because... I think you can now put engravings on the, uh... Yeah, you could put engravings on the, uh, built walls. You used to not be able to do that. I can imagine, though, with the rock changing type uh, as you go down the layers, it would have an interesting uh, sort of smoothed appearance of the different strata um, as you look down the hall, which would have its own nice appeal. Okay, we'll just let that be worked on. Uh, right. You know, I think I want to make another, uh, another, uh, group of, uh, militia tools. So we'll... Yeah, I was actually making another uh, training room over here, so we'll make another barracks. Uh, let's see. I have a captain of the guard, Stodia. We have a militia, militia commander, Bath. Oh, hang on. Okay, good. Uh, that's... 
path which is leading that. So we'll do Studier, and we'll do Ironbreaker's armor. There we go. Change that symbol. Uh, what do I want? Choose that one. Background can be white again. And... Yeah, we'll choose the purple. There we go. The built-in keys. And we can choose... Uh, the bone carver. Not the doctor. The planter. Weaver. Weaver. Uh, lie maker. Miller. Peasant. Peasant. And... And a gilder. There we go. <clears throat> and you. So I've got you equipped with iron breakers. I'm going to make another uh, armor type and we're going to call them hammerers. Because my obsession with Warf with uh, Warhammer knows no bounds. Body wear, you will have metal shirts, breastplates, helmets, uh, leggings, greaves, gauntlets, high boots, a shield, and you're going to have... I think war at Warhammers are... Let me just check. Is a Warhammer a single or double we handed weapon? Also known as Aulnis Nil in dwarf language. A Warhammer is a blunt weapon that is essentially a hammer with a long handle. A Warhammer is half the size of a mace, with half the contact area as well, and less than one third the size of a wall. Because blood damage focused in a small contact area is mostly unaffected by armor, Warhammers are considered one of the best weapons for fighting humanoid opponents. Warhammers can use and train the Hammer Dwarf skill. Dwarves can forge effective Warhammers out of any weapons grade metal, though those with high densities, like silver, or high impact fracture yields, like steel, tend to cause more damage. All dwarves can equip Warhammers, though a tiny fraction must use two hands. Oh, interesting. What's, what determines that? Weapons have a minimum size to use at all, and a minimum size to use one-handed. Adult dwarves vary in size between 33,750 and 93,750, average 60,000, based on their height and broadness. Unfortunately, this is currently bugged in Fortress mode. One-handed versus two-handed checks are performed correctly, but can wield versus can't wield ignores height and broadness modifiers. So dwarves in Fortress mode will never equip two-handed swords, great axes, halberds, mauls, or pikes. Other weapons have a minimum wielding size of less than 60,000 and are wielded one-handed if the individual dwarf is large enough. The following table shows approximately how many dwarves should be able to use each weapon one or two-handed, with all fractional numbers being approximate. While there are seven categories, each for height and broadness, the number used is chosen randomly from within each category. Uh, okay, so it seems like just the natural various var variety... The natural uh, variety of dwarf sizes uh, can change whether they can wield something one or two-handed. Dwarves wield two-handed. Apparently one in 49 dwarves will wield it uh, two-handed. That might be why some of my dwarves will be running around with just an axe and no shield. Because they're essentially wielding it uh, two-handed. I never knew that was a thing. I thought whether it was a one or two-handed weapon was built into the weapon itself. 
Uh, let's see. Zon, where are you? Hmm. Oh well. Oh, uh, you. Schedule. Monthly orders. There we go. I think you're both on monthly orders. Yep, good. I actually had uh, the fences of closing on uh, constant training at one point. Just to make sure that they had uh, some skill. I might actually do that for the hammerers, just so that they uh, train up especially quick. You know. Rather than doing every uh, every few months. Okay. I think I'm actually going to have us save the game here. Uh, let's see. Okay, just in case for crashes. And uh, I'm going to take a very quick break. So I'll pause the recording and... Ugh. I'll be back in a moment. Once it's finished saving. Come on. Any moment now. There we go. Okay. So I'll pause the recording here and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, we're back. Uh, let's see. Right. So we were doing the training. Uh, have people started making those? No. Oh, manager might not have gone to his uh, office. Where is he? Uh, manager. Oh, they're making gold rings. Look at this. They're just leaving, like, clothing scattered over the, uh, stairways. I think they, like, if their hauling job gets interrupted, because I designate a burrow, they'll drop the item and it'll become forbidden. Okay, yeah, just keep mining that over there. The cavern's full of blood. <clears throat> Some teeth down here, honey badger teeth. Weird. Oh, I, I dug a small stair here to see what the ground was like underneath here. It's sandstone. I was seeing whether it was like more sand for uh, planting crops, but oh, what's this? The Hall of Gorges has many members in Tower Riddled and now requires a guild hall. A grand guild hall. For a farmer guild. Do we not have one? Wasn't this a farmer's thing? Farmer Guild Hall. The Tongue of Dawns. Agreed to build Grand Guild Hall. Oh! Do they just want a better one? Uh, where do you, where do you see that? I guess it's just under that. 
agreed to build Grand Guildhall. 10,000. Okay. Fine. Not asking for too much, are you? I need more gold statues. <sighs> okay. Uh... Gold statues! Make ten of them. They're going to be stupidly heavy to haul all over the place. Uh, in the meantime, we can uh, place th some more uh, gold flooring. Because <laughs> we're dwarves, damn it. We like gold. Gold, 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 gold. Oh, that... No, lad, you don't want to go there. That's a dwarf bar, that is. That doesn't sound too bad to me, yeah? How long do you think you can sing about gold? Mm, it's yellow and soft, and it glitters very well. Mm. Maybe about five, five seconds, I think. Yeah, tends to get a bit repetitive after the first five hours. Yeah, there's some weird things around. Uh, was I saying this before? Yeah, with the with the honey badger's teeth. Um, so during the goblin siege, all the fighting took place up here. However, I noticed uh, one of the goblins which died over here. Somehow their arm had landed down here in the tunnels, and <laughs> I don't know about you, but I don't know how it would have uh, gotten down there. I'm pretty sure there's not a hole in the roof. Like it would say open space if there was one. Hmm. Because I think you can get holes in the roof if you cut a tree away from above. Because then the roots leave a hole in the ground. But, uh... Yeah, I don't know. Ah, very nice looking. Damn it! Sorry, I can't build it. Someone dropped their shirt here. Oh, did I raise the uh, bridge again for that? No, I didn't. Pull lever, quick. Before someone makes off with our uh, valuable artifacts.
Okay, coach, you got to pull it. Yeah, because you've got a... Hmm. You've got a shield, but you don't have an axe. Maybe you put your axe on a weapon rack. How's this looking for the value? Oh, fantastic. Once it's all built, it should be uh, at the appropriate price. We've got a statue somewhere, but some poor, uh, some poor sod is lugging it <laughs> to a stockpile. Just look for the dwarf, which is being really, really slow. It's like that native gold grate. The dwarf who was carrying it <laughs> moved so slowly, dragging it to the, uh, dragging it to the, uh, storage pile. What are you doing? Oh, you're making gold rings. It's just like playing here. Be pretty warm. Okay, what about this tunnel, which I mined out? Someone just drops their clothes in the tunnel. Uh, there's some hematite there. Gypsum. Well, I can use that, but that's not really what I wanted. Alabaster. Yeah. Alabaster's nice. That's what they'd make uh, some of the uh, tomb goods for the uh, pharaohs out of. What about this? Uh, cobaltite. Okay. And native gold. I feel like putting a road along here. You can actually see, because the dwarves walk back and forth over this area quite frequently, uh, the uh, fungus gets torn up and it just leaves it exposed uh, peat. Uh, that happens outside as well. The uh, paths which are uh, frequently walked will uh, often have bare uh, dirt instead of grass growing on it. I don't know if it affects surfaces like uh, snow. Oh, it's a dead bunny, which died quite a long time ago. Someone's pet. Armor rack. Okay. How's this looking? Nice! It's a grand guild, guild hall now. We don't need the other statues in there, but we'll put them in there because uh, it looks a little bare without them up there. And we had to remove those chests. There we go. Well, we've got one of them done. Some of these statues are of dwarves. <laughs> this one here is of a, uh, a gold statue of blood gnats. This one here is a gold statue of a bark scorpion. This one here is a gold statue of a cave fish. Uh, jumping spiders. This one is one of uh, tekud safe boulders. 
It's an image of Tekko and safe boulders, the dwarf and Maga Wisp mine, and the subtlety of nightmares, the forgotten beast in gold by Unib Dusim's Holid. Maga Wisp mine, the subtlety of nightmares, is striking down Tekko and safe boulders, relates to the killing of the dwarf by the forgotten beast. In gold painted the mountain of prairies in the early spring of 84 during the rampage of the forgotten beast. Okay, so not something which happened here. And an image of dragonflies. That'd be nice. Having like a gold statue of a dragonfly. We've had so many around the place recently. It's quite nice seeing them darting around the backyard. Uh, I guess eating all the little, uh, all the little uh, insects which are also buzzing around. But uh, there's been heaps. I've seen like eight at once. Usually you'd see only like one or two dragonflies. But uh, there's been quite a lot of them around the place. Now the ring's coming on. Well-crafted gold ring. I look forward for when magic ends up getting added into the Wolf Fortress. I know some people are a bit eh about it because I think it will it will change like the uh it will change quite a lot about the fundamental natures of Dwarf Fortress. The Echidna um rolls into a ball, unrolls, stands up. Aw, that's adorable. Um but like having magic and being able to I guess like enchanting items and all that oh oh that would be really cool hey look it's getak it's that uh it's that uh this is the uh intelligent undead person I was talking about getak virgin blossoms who was uh stealing our artifacts yeah they're called a sallow butcher 52 years old uh, so she visited, uh, but it looks like she was only here for a brief moment, and then she was, uh, running off again. I'll get you next time, maybe. <laughs> I just checked her inventory and... She doesn't have any, uh, any of her artifacts, so that's good. She didn't try to make... It might have actually been good if she tried to make off with the gold bucket. Her movement would have been so slowed that my sheriff would be able to catch her. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking with this mountain here. A true dwarf, uh... Dwarf Fortress mega construction would be to flatten a mountain. <laughs> you just start at the top and channel it away layer by layer. <laughs> and people would come here and it's like, wasn't there a mountain here at one point? And you're like, yeah, at one point. Someone's got to have done that. Just like mined away an entire embark zone all the way down to the magma layer or something. <laughs> Remove that shirt, please. <laughs> please. Oh, it's got an owner. So it's not that... <laughs> owner, please come and pick up your shirt. It is blocking important constructions. If you will not move, remove it. Uh, we will dump it, and it will just uh, deteriorate over time outside. 
if you cannot be trusted to look after your own equipment, then we will, uh... <laughs> we will forcefully remove all of your equipment. Again, this, this... <sighs> okay, I think I can put auto mine on this and they won't actually mine out into the water. Side. I do like how there's so many different materials and types of stone in Dwarf Fortress. Even if a lot of them don't really mean anything, it's it, it's nice. It, I don't know showcases the geological variety that exists. Just going to be watching you carefully. <laughs> it's getting a little close here. Okay. Oh, nice. A masterpiece gold statue of dwarves. Yep. See, they're not actually mining through to the, uh, to the water. They're actually kind of smart in that regard. Wouldn't have actually mined if they mined it in. If, I wouldn't have actually minded if they mined into that area there. Ugh. <laughs> because that's only a, a very small pond. This would be a bit more of a problem. <laughs> this would drain eventually. Eventually. After it had finished draining into my mine. Going down the stairs. I'd have had to have, like, opened up a tunnel here and dumped it into... Actually, no, I wouldn't be able to do that because, uh... It would be flooded with water. All of the dwarves which are forging stuff down in the, uh, magma forges, they would, uh... They would all be drowned. I remember, I think at one point it was planned to have the, uh, to maybe have the, uh, ore seams go across Z levels. But that would cause, mm, that would make it rather difficult to mine them out. Because you would, it's not really easy to go between Z levels. Well... If the dwarves did it automatically, I guess they'd be mining it out using ramps or something, but... I think maybe it's best if they're on one Z level. Because it makes planning out, like, a uh, mine shaft a bit easier than if they're constantly going up and down. Do we have any other gems around here? No. Okay.
it used to be the case that these uh ore seams they weren't in these sort of long diagonal lines everywhere uh instead you would get large sort of circular patches of of ore uh or not circular sort of more like oval uh blobs of ore scattered throughout the uh throughout the Z levels um you would get magnetite like that i remember i think maybe some of the other metals like gold might have been in smaller patches or something or maybe scattered a bit more rarely uh but magnetite was in large uh these large ovals um which meant that you got an awful lot of ore for finding one of them um and you could have quite a few of them scattered around the place but uh this this way of having the veins sort of snaking through things is it's much nicer i don't think things still appear like that um even these like non or things like uh this gypsum here that seems to be no, i don't know it's like in a patch there but uh anyway sorry i trailed off a bit there uh i don't know whether other materials use that uh method of appearing Do I have smelt? You have smelt magnetite or? Smelt native gold ore, please. And. I don't know. Do it a hundred. Because we need a lot. Actually, do a two hundred. Just keep doing it. I'm not going to put infinite. <laughs> Okay, so. Have you finished up here? Ah, good, you moved your shirt. Some of that problem with removing the shirt is that someone will be getting the task to go move it, but then they might get distracted by something else. And uh, it means the person who wants to construct that section of wall, uh, they won't be able to construct it because... No, oh, right um because uh you know someone else is tasked with moving the shirt so they can't they won't move it themselves okay the miner has been bitten by a case spider um that's it's not great but they're not in any danger uh i don't know it doesn't say who it just says the miner. Uh, they might have a negative thought. Being bitten by a case spider, as I said, is not life-threatening. However, case spiders do have venom, and uh, it will cause uh, dizziness in that dwarf, which I believe will persist for the rest of their life. It just means every now and then they will stop what they're doing and have a dizzy spell. Um, you might see someone with... I think it will be like a little blue icon above their head. Every now and then. Again, it's not anything. Massively problematic.
but it does mean that they will uh, have their tasks interrupted every now and then. But I don't think it should be too much of a problem for a miner. Miasma. We have some lying around here. Or rotting stuff lying around here. No. I need to find a use for all these skulls and bones. Can I make floor out of them? I don't think so. No. That's something that uh, RimWorld has over Dwarf Fortress. You can't make a uh, bone floor or... Uh, like dwarf skin couches and so on. Well, I mean, you could get like a uh, a dwarf bone throne if you get a macabre mood and they decide to make a throne. Uh, but uh, you can't go uh, making one yourself. Okay. Hey, I actually finished this. Uh, catch a live land animal. I don't think I've got a cage for that. Yep. They just go, nope, can't do that. Okay, well, I think uh, I'll save it there and we'll return to this next time. The fortress is going pretty well. Uh, caught up everyone with it. Uh, I'm going to be continuing doing some on my own. Uh, working on the fortress. Keeping everyone alive to the best of my ability. <laughs> um, I'll probably mostly be working on that main hall. Though I might get started in some of the side rooms as well. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll try and get some of the uh, bedrooms which I want to have designed. Laid out. Uh, so I have sort of a design I'm happy with to uh, repeat for other dwarves. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it for, make them for all 100 dwarves. I'll have to think about that because that's quite a lot of them. Um, and I guess I can make like a huge hall with 50 per side. Though not necessarily 50 because some dwarves live together. Um, but yeah, I'll have to have a think about it. But anyway... That will be it for Dwarf Fortress, so thank you very much for joining. I hope you join me again next time.